What is up, guys? Welcome back for our Week 9 Team Builder for the NBA. This week, we are taking on Drew, the D Detroit Soul Gallios. That's actually not his team name, but he replaced a coach in the NBA for us. So, big thanks to Drew. If you want to check him out, his link will be in the description in this video and in the battle. Uh, as he goes by the name Little Bigness. So, you're probably wondering, where is Week 8? And as a couple of people have already asked me, well, Week 8, if you didn't catch one of my lives where I mentioned it, has been postponed till later in the season because my opponent is in India, so we need to find a way to link up our schedules. Uh, more than likely on a weekend would be the best, so we'll uh, we'll just push that to the end of the season for now. We'll have that last game. We're against Ro Rohit uh, and the Indus Valley Infernapes, but we're going to focus on this week for now. Now, uh, Drew's team is um, was not drafted by him, so... Uh, he was very comfortable with all of the Pokemon on the team. He decided to keep every single one, even though he was allowed to make three free trades. Uh, actually, he may have made three free trades because I see now on our sheet that uh, Zoroark, Azelf, and Dugtree are gone. But uh, let's just go over his team really quickly. He has Starmie, Entei, Shaman, Cobalion, Diancy, Murkrow, Megalodios, Electros, Heracross, Nidoking, <laughs> Electros, Heracross, Nidoking, and Ditto. So, a lot of Pokemon that I'm very familiar with, uh, particularly Starmie, Entei, Cobalion, Electros, uh, and Nidoking to some extent. The rest I haven't used too often, whether it be in lives or in league for format, and I haven't gone up against them that often either. So, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge trying to prep for this team, but I immediately see the threats on my opponent's team, and I can name them right off the bat. They're Entei, uh, Cobalion, Diancie, believe it or not, to my team. Um, Mega Latios and Heracross. Those are his biggest threats. Needle King is a little bit of a threat, but I'm not taking it too highly into account because if it's choice, I can deal with it. If it's not choice, I can deal with it even better. So, the team we decided to bring this week, we're going to start off with Mamoswine Twerk. We are bringing a Max Attack Adamant Choppleberry set with Stealth Rocks, Earthquake, Icicle Crash, and Ice Shard. Uh, so, why am I bringing Adamant? Because it hits harder, obviously. Uh, it also puts uh, Cobalion in range, like a no defense Cobalion in range of a um, in, in range of an Ice Shard afterwards, unless I get two absolute min rolls on both moves. So this is our anti lead to Cobalion. I can see him bringing bringing either a Cobalion lead or a setup Cobalion, and we'll get to that later. But in either case, I'm able to live its close combat because of the Choppel Berry. I'll only take about 60%. I should even be able to live a crit. And I'll EQ him back and then I shard him on the following turn and knock him out. That may prevent me from being able to get up rocks. But he can also run Taunt on his Cobalion to prevent me from doing that. And he can even be cheeky and run an Air Balloon to completely counter my, my Mammoth Swine turn 1. So, this is just in case he brings a very offensive Stealth Rock Setter turn 1. Uh, we can... Uh, check that in immediately with Earthquake uh, and knock it out on the following turn with Ice Shard, so that's very nice. So this is our Mammoth Swine set. It's very simple. Uh, it also does a couple of other things for us. Uh, obviously, it can't hit Electros too well outside of Icicle Crash. Um, it also is able to deal with uh, Needle King if he doesn't speed invest it. Uh, it has a priority, which is really nice for Latios, be able to bring a potential sub on um, the Mega Latios, of course. Uh, Murkrow drops instantly to an Icicle Crash. I don't care if he's EV Light. Uh, Diancy is also uh, nuked by an Earthquake. It's not O-Code, but it does a lot of damage. Uh, and Entei doesn't actually have anything that's super effective for us uh, outside of Iron Head. So we can potentially take even a Banded uh, Sacred Fire, not a Flare Blitz, but a Sacred Fire, uh, and be able to fire back an Earthquake. Granting we don't get burned, of course. So this is our Mammoth Swine, again, like I said, very simple. Uh, I'm actually going to uh, keep Oblivious, actually, because now I'm looking at his team, and this counters his Taunt. So this is really nice, and I don't ever really want to stay in on Entei because I have a counter, and my counter is right here. You guys, <coughs> you're going to be surprised by the set a little bit. Uh, this is a set that was kind of tailored by Miguel Mega Mogwai. Uh, it's a really interesting Hydreigon set. It's the first time I'm bringing it this way. It's fully defensive, fully physically defensive. 244 HP, this gives us... Uh, actually, I want to increase that real quick. Uh, this gives us 388. Where's my 388? Come on. What the heck? Hold on. There we go. 388 gives us a leftovers number, so uh, we're gaining back exactly 6% every turn, which is really nice. Uh, Dark Pulse hits a lot of his team, mainly Starmie, Megalodios, uh, does good damage to the Electros, but the biggest things are Megalodios <clears throat> and Starmie. I want to be able to deal with those things, and the reason I'm bringing this Hydreigon set is to deal with Entei mainly. 
because Sacred Fire, Banded, Adamant does like 34% to me. It's really nothing. It doesn't, it hardly even touches me. Of course, it gets a burn that's a little bit uh, hampering to what I want to do afterwards. As you can see, we're running Iron Tail. That's specifically for Deancey. Uh, it doesn't allow us to hit anything else, really. But his main switch into this should be his Deancey, in theory. Because uh, the only coverage I can run for it would be Iron Tail. And he can run a max physically defensive set to be able to take that. So, uh, Fire Blast is there for the Cobalion, uh, as well as the Heracross. So I can hit those things back. Um, Pokemon that would normally uh, be able to check me pretty well. Fire Blast comes in and uh, pretty much destroys them. Uh, obviously, we're not running any special attack investment. This is because Starmie still drops after a Life Orb hit to this. Uh, and like I said before, after Leftovers Recovery, if there's no burn on the Sacred Fire, it's a 3-hit KO. It's not a 3-hit KO, excuse me. Uh, he fails to 3-hit KO me with Entei, so I'll be able to 2-hit KO him back faster with Dark Pulse than he'll be able to 3-hit KO me, or 4-hit KO me, rather. So that's why we're bringing Hydreigon is mainly for Entei, but it also checks a couple of other things pretty well. Next up, we have Scizor. Edward. Uh, I don't know why he's not nicknamed. I thought I had done that. Um, but anyway. Uh, Scizorite, li Light Metal, because I'm going to be uh, Mega Evolving turn 1 anyway. He doesn't really have a low kicker on his team uh, that I can see, so I might change that to Technician. I'm not sure. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't make a difference in this case. Uh, unless I don't want to Mega Evolve for whatever reason, but there's never any reason not to Mega Evolve your Scizor. We're running a Sword Dance, Roost, Bullet Punch, U-Turn. Uh, the standard, uh, especially defensive set, the bulky, uh, bulky Sword Dance Scizor. Uh, so this Pokemon right here can definitely put a hole in uh, in Drew's team later in the game. Once I've weakened Entei, if I'm able to get up rocks with Mamoswine, uh, I can pretty much bullet punch through the, the remainder of my opponent's team. Because of this investment, I can also take close combats from Cobalion relatively well, even at plus two. Uh, I can, well, it's a two hit KO at plus two, but I'm able to roost off the damage the first time, force him to go for a Swords Dance, and then I can start hitting him. I can even U-turn out into something like Thunderous later, uh, well, right away as he swords dances and we're able to knock him out on the following turn. So, Scizor is here for the late game mainly. If I don't see the Entei, this thing is going to put a tremendous amount of work in on my opponent. And I haven't talked about something yet and I want to just address it really quickly. Ditto is a threat. Ditto is absolutely a threat. Because if you know me, I have a tendency of running a lot of setup sweepers. This week, we're only running two. And both of them, I have counters for. So if I manage to set up with Scizor or with uh, the next Pokemon that you guys will see in a second, I still have something to take them on if he brings in a Scarf Ditto afterwards. So he might bring Ditto specifically for like Dragon Dance, Tyrantrum, Calm Mind, Slowbro, pretty much anything like that, uh, just to be able to counter me and just run through my team. But I have Pokemon that can take on um, Ditto relatively well. Scizor, like I said before, is only going to be reserved for the late game. So even if he brings in Ditto, like, he has to lock himself into a move. And if that move is U-turn, then he's gone. He's out of there. And if that move is Bullet Punch, then I can switch into Thunderous. Uh, or I can just stay in and U-turn as he Bullet Punches on the following turn and put him in range of whatever other move I have. Uh, granting, of course, that I can outspeed whatever is... Um, in front of me being the Ditto at 186 times 1.5. I just need to go into something faster. We have a Pokemon that's uh, we have two Pokemon that are faster than that, so that's not a problem. The next Pokemon we have here is Broom Slurpuff. So this is my win con, guys. Slurpuff I like to use to reserve as a win condition because a lot of people look at it and they're like, okay, well I'm just going to bring my Needle King and Sludge Wave and it'll be fine. Uh, I'll bring a Focus Sash Needle King or I'll bring a uh, focus Sash Cobalion and just Iron Head and kill it. Uh, but that's not always the case. You have to pay very close attention to Fairy types when you see them on your opponent's team. Because remember, there are only two typings that resist Fairy, and both of them are Steel and Poison. And Slurpuff happens to get coverage for both of those types, being Flamethrower and, and uh, Psychic. I'm not running Psychic, as you guys can see. It's mainly because I want to use Slurpuff as a Cleric as well this week, potentially. Be able to wish uh, Scizor back up, or Mamoswine, or even my Thunderous, because that's going to get very weak very fast. Uh, not because of Life Orb, because we're running Leftovers, but rather because of Rocks, because we don't have any Hazard removal on this team. It's not too big of an issue, because two of our Pokemon have healing moves. Another one is more of a Suicide lead, 
and uh, the last one is uh, the only one that's really affected by it. So, uh, rocks aren't too big of a deal, but if I can pass a wish off into Thunderous, that's just great. Like, if at any point I can do that, that's amazing. Uh, I can pretty much do that with uh, in front of Cobalion if I choose to. Uh, if he switches in Cobalion on me, then I can switch out into Thunderous. His only super effective move on me is Stone Edge. If he's not packing it for whatever reason, if I've already scouted his moveset earlier in the game, then I can just switch into Thunderous freely, take rocks, take whatever move he goes for, wish back up all the way, because this thing has a tremendous HP stat uh, at 367 when it's fully invested. So it can pretty much heal anything up on my team from half, except for Hydreigon. Everything else I can heal up all the way if it's at half. So that's why I'm running Wish. But the main purpose of this set is to be able to set up and win. Like, Scizor's cool, but Slurpuff just wins. If you look at his team, his fairy resists, like I said before, are Cobalion and Nidoking. I have Pokemon to check Nidoking and Cobalion. Like, you can look at my team really quickly. Scizor checks Cobalion relatively well. So does Thunderous, if he's not carrying a, uh, a Rock-type move. And if we're talking about Nidoking, then our next Pokemon, Hocus, uh, the Miss Magius, can switch into either one of its stabs. He has to go for a Sludge Wave against me, uh, or else he's not getting off, uh, getting off as much damage as he would like. And the fact that we have Calm Mind makes it even harder for him, because if I get up a Calm Mind or two before that Needle King even gets a chance to come in, I can live his Sludge Wave. I'll be at 300 Special Defense, 350 uh, HP. I'll be able to take it no problem, even a Life Orb Modest variant. I'll be able to take, like, what, 60% from it? So it's not too bad. Uh, the reason I'm not running uh, Psychic on this set, like I said before, I want the Wish Passing. I want to also be able to heal up my Slurpuff at any time because we're rocking Babiri Berry. Why are we running Babiri Berry? Because I'm 100% sure that Cobalion is coming. If that Cobalion does not show up to this game, I will be in shock. So I'm thinking, set up Slurpuff on the Cobalion. Get him to switch into it. Uh, if he doesn't bring the Nido King, which he shouldn't in theory because I have a lot of things that can check it on my team. So, he has to be careful with what he brings. I don't think the Nido King is coming. If you want me to be honest with you, the six Pokemon that I think are absolutely coming are Entei, Cobalion, Deancey, Megalodios, Electros, and Ditto. But, I could be wrong. We'll see. He might bring the Heracross as well, but again, our next Pokemon resi resists both of its stabs. It's actually immune to one of them. Uh, just as it was with Needle King, actually. So, Dazzling Gleam and Flamethrower. This pretty much covers my opponent's entire team with a couple of Calm Minds up. Starmie uh, gets to it KO'd by a plus one Dazzling Gleam or a plus two, maybe. Uh, Entei is um, Entei is another issue, but uh, we can wear that thing down easily between rocks and U-turning and whatnot. Shaman, very easily dealt with with Calm Minds up. Uh, Cobalion takes a Flamethrower, dies at plus two or plus three, I'm not sure. Maybe after rocks plus two. Um, Deancey doesn't appreciate Dazzling Gleam, can't really do anything back to me because we're max physical defense, even if he runs Diamond Storm, it doesn't matter. Um, Latios, I can set up alongside it and pretty much beat it 1v1. Uh, we also have uh, Electros, which again doesn't do anything to me outside of maybe Acid Spray, which he might bring specifically for this Slurpuff. Uh, Heracross, again, if it locks itself into a move, if it's choice, it can't do anything to me. Even outside of its stab, it doesn't really have anything good to hit me with because I'm max physical defense. Uh, then there's Needle King, which we already covered, and Ditto, of course, like I said before, if I set up with Slurpuff, and he goes into Ditto, I have to check to see how the Unburden versus, um, versus Choice Scarf and Ditto works. I don't know if he actually gets the speed boost from my Unburden, so I might actually still be faster than him, but again, he has to lock himself into a move. I can switch out my Slurpuff and go into Scizor. And if he doesn't flamethrower, if you, even if he does flamethrower, if he flamethrowers, then I just go right back out into uh, Slurpuff or into something else like uh, Mamoswine, and I just knock him out. Uh, or I can go into uh, Miss Magius, and you guys will see the set in a second. I'll do something to his Ditto. Uh, but, like, I have answers for if he comes in with Ditto on a setup Slurpuff. And even at that, I have Wish. He can't lock himself in a Wish. If I don't set up to past plus three, I believe, he doesn't two-hit KO me anyway. I can just click Wish, and then click Dazzling Gleam, and repeat the process over and over again. That's another reason I'm running Wish. I don't necessarily have to switch out on a Ditto that comes in on a setup Slurpuff. That's the reason we're running this set. Uh, Babiri Berry, uh, like I said before, is for Cobalion. He will more than likely hit me with a Steel move if he's in front of me. 
Uh, I will get the, the boost, I will then be faster than his Cobalion, and the 4 speed you see there is actually very crucial. It allows us to outspeed Starmie at max speed when we're doubled in speed. We go up to 362, Starmie hits 361, so we're faster than his entire team. Uh, outside of, of, of course, Murkrow's uh, Prankster ability. So our next Pokemon here is Hocus, our Choice Scarfed um, Miss Magius. We spend a lot of time on Slurpuff there. We're going to try to move on to a different Pokemon now. So we have our Choice Scarf Miss Magius here. Why Choice Scarf? Because I need a response to if he sets up with Latios. Plain and simple. I just need something to deal with Latios if he sets up. The only way I can deal with it is by Destiny Bonding it. I have nothing else on my team. Outside of maybe a Sash Mamoswine Icicle Crash into Ice Shard, but that's the thing. If Latios gets behind a sub, I'm done. I, I just straight out lose. Uh, again, he could be he could not be cover, uh, packing coverage for Scizor in HP Fire, but I doubt that. If he's going to bring a, a, a Mega Latios, he's going to have a way to deal with Scizor, because outside of that, I resist both his stabs. So, uh, Miss Magus is here solely for that purpose. However, Shadow Ball and Psychic, if you look at his team... They do very well. Starmie's super effective. Entei doesn't take it well. Neither does Shaman. Cobalion takes a lot. Deancey, not so much, but still. Uh, we whittle that thing down. That's what's important. Get in range of Iron Tail from Hydreigon. Uh, Mega Latios doesn't appreciate a Shadow Ball. Neither does Electros from Max Special Attack, Modest. Uh, even if it's AV, it's going to take like 30 or 35. Heracross doesn't like Psychic. That's why we're running that. We're also running it for Nidoking, his... Two, uh, you guys don't see the list, but in order, I'm going through it. Heracross and Nidoking, very nice uh, psychic to have on there. And also, uh, I don't necessarily want to lock myself into a ghost type move uh, against him sometimes. I mean, like, against most of his team, I guess there's no reason not to, but anyway. Uh, and then there's Ditto. Now, Ditto is, uh, is once again comes into play with this Mismagius. So, he will copy my speed and be choice scarfed. He will be as fast as me. We can risk the speed tie and just go for the Shadow Ball. Or we can switch into Hydreigon, who resists any and all hits that this thing can throw out. If he mementos, then he mementos. What can I say? There's nothing I can do about that. But this set, I, I feel like, is my only and prime response to Megalodios setting up on me. Slurpuff is good if I'm already in before the Megalodios, because Psyshock is going to start racking up if he gets it up to a certain amount of boosts, so I have to be very careful with that. And uh, the thing about Megalodios this game is that it has a very, uh, very big four, uh, four move slot syndrome, in the fact that if it doesn't run HP Fire, I can't touch Scizor. If it doesn't run Sub, then I'm not too worried about it because I can still get rid of it uh, if it's not behind a Sub with uh, Shadow Ball or with um, Memento, Destiny Bond, like I don't really care about Latios that much. Uh, if it doesn't run Roost, then we can uh, wear it down very easily with Slurpuff if it's already set up. And if it doesn't run a Dragon-type move, then it can hit Hydreigon. So, this is the uh, the problem he's faced with with Megalodios if he wants to bring it this week. I'm sure he's going to bring it, and I'm sure he's going to find a very good set for it. But it doesn't do as much as it may look like at first glance because of the team that we're bringing. So, uh, next up, finally, we have Thundolos, the Thunderous. Now, this was a very hard last Pokemon for me to pick, mainly because I wanted to bring Slowbro. I wanted Slowbro to be my main response to a setup Cobalion, but I realized that I couldn't do that because he has just way too many things that switch in freely on Slowbro and either set up on it or destroy it. Mainly Shaman, Megalodios, and Electros. Those three Pokemon, like I don't think he's bringing Shaman against me, but he could, again. Uh, and it doesn't do too bad against me either. Like, it, it gets Seed Flare for Mamoswine, it gets HP Fire for Scizor, uh, it gets uh, Earth Power for um, Tyrantrum. Like, it can definitely deal with my physically offensive threats uh, by outspeeding them and knocking them out with coverage. But if he does bring it, I can't bring Slowbro. Because if I Scald, if I just want to freely Scald and try to get off a burn, one, Shaman has Natural Cure, it can just switch out and get rid of the burn, and two, it can Seed Flare me if it wants to. And I can't really switch anything in because I risk a special defense drop. So, Shaman, uh, I couldn't bring Slowbro because of Shaman. I needed to bring something that could deal with everything outside of Shaman. At the same time, sort of deal with Shaman because its coverage is limited. So I brought Thunderous, and the reason I brought Thunderous um, is because 
I needed something to revenge kill the Kabalion, if it's set up. I didn't have anything yet. If that thing gets set up to plus two, what do I do? I have absolutely nothing for it. I can destiny bond it, but what if he sees through that? What if he's already seen me destiny bond earlier in the game? Then I just lose to Kobalion? I don't want to lose to Kobalion. So I'm bringing Thunderous with Thunderbolt, Focus Blast, Psychic, and T-Wave. Just enough speed to outspeed Megalodios. Well, never outspeed Starmie anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, the rest in Special Attack and Special Defense. This set was very difficult for me to, uh, to decide on. Because I knew that I needed Focus Blast for Cobalion, but at the same time I was worried about it because if he brings in Ditto after I get a kill with this thing, I have to pick a sack. I can't predict what move he's going to go for if he is choice locked. If he's not, then, I mean, he got me, but if he is choice locked, then I can't switch into Hydreigon because if he Focus Blasts, I'm dead. I can't stay in because if he Thunderbolts, I'm dead. I can't go into Scizor to Thunderbolts probably kill me. Uh, I can't go into Slurpuff, I'll lose it, I can't go into Miss Magius, I don't want that thing weakened, and I can't go into Mamoswine once again because of the Focus Blast, so I have to predict around it, but I knew that I needed Focus Blast, there was nothing else I could run, I mean, I could have run Hidden Power Ground, but that wouldn't have been enough, I'd rather run uh, just Thunderbolt at that point, just all electric coverage, so if he brings in Ditto on me, I can just switch into Mamoswine and get up my rocks, but I can't do that, I need to run Focus Blast. Psychic is there, once again, for the Heracross, for the Nido King, uh, mainly the Nido King because it's uh, the only thing that really switches in on my electric moves, uh, outside of may maybe Electros, uh, Latios too, but that doesn't want to take a U-turn if I'm running it, or knock off, or anything like that. And lastly, we're running Thunder Wave, and Thunder Wave is there because I need to spread status. That's it. Like, I need to spread status on his team. I need something, I need, uh, not that I need to slow it down necessarily, but it helps. It helps with Slurpuff. If he can't get off a hit for one turn and I'm able to get up a Calm Mind with Slurpuff, I can just sw straight sweep his team. It's over. Like, the, the game ends. If I get up two Calm Minds and have no damage on Slurpuff whatsoever, I can sweep his team. And that's it. Like, all I need out of the way is Entei at that point. So, that's going to wrap it up for the team, guys. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. So, you, if you want to check out the match tomorrow, you're going to need to be subscribed. It's going to come up in your uh, in your sub box. Uh, or, I guess you could just come back to the channel. Uh, and definitely check out my opponent in the description down below. I don't know if he's posting his matches. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I just want to keep up with this league. There will be uh, an announcement coming out later, guys. Very, very big announcement uh, regarding this league and something else. So definitely keep your uh, your eyes peeled for that. A lot of you watching this already know what it is. Uh, a lot of you don't. So definitely uh, be sure to stick around for later today. Uh, of course, I am putting this up on Saturday. So uh, same day kind of thing. Uh, we should be having our match a little bit later against Drew. We haven't scheduled the time yet, but uh, should be coming. So yeah, that's it, guys. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Ciao.